Hello, my name is Anthony Barocas of IEBA Communications, and today I want to talk to you about a new adapter that's coming out to mount your ENG B4 lens onto Micro Four Thirds. Now, I have been doing this for many years and there are many adapters out there. Over here we have the standard what we call dumb adapter. It's just a physical connection between a B4 lens, in this case one without a doubler, to a micro four thirds camera. In this case I'm using a GH4 in high def mode so it's using the fullest part of the sensor. If you shoot in 4K it crops the sensor a little bit so we're trying to get a more faithful representation of using most of the micro four third sensor so we're using HD mode in all of these shots. This camera right here you can see right here is windowed or what I say is there's you don't get full coverage. Actually that might be the lens hood. Let's take the lens hood off because da -da -da, get a little bit wider without the lens hood on there. What you can see is this is the edges of the lens, and as I zoom, let me take this, you can see that that edge changes. When I zoom all the way in, it gets soft, and when I zoom out, you can see how it changes diameter and gets a little larger there at the end. So you can see it varies, and this lens without a doubler is not going to cover the whole sensor. It's the, the, it was designed for a much smaller sensor than a micro four thirds sensor, so or what they call a two thirds inch sensor. And that size is you know very tiny, and the micro four thirds is much larger. So thusly, when you put this lens on a micro four thirds, the circle of light that comes through it is obviously not gonna cover the whole sensor. Now, if you add an adapter to it, you can get more coverage. And that's what we're gonna look at today. I have over here, I have a two thirds inch lens and it's going through an adapter. As an aside, people have asked me, why would I do this? Why would you go through the trouble of putting this old, these old lenses? I mean, you can still get them new, but you generally you're buying older lenses off eBay that were used to be on these big on shoulder cameras. Why would you do that? Well, because this lens, for instance, this is a 15X lens. That's a 15X zoom. Constant aperture. Now right there, that is very unique. You're gonna, not gonna find a 15X constant aperture photographic lens. So right there, that makes this lens very unique. It goes down to f 1.7. Now, there's some caveats that these lenses are made for three chip cameras and they were, you know, designed to uh, offset the use of a prism to separate between red, green, and blue. So when you open them fully all the way, they tend to get a little milky, a little soft. If you close down, I have them down to f4, you can see that they actually get pretty good. Let's look at that lens right now. That lens is right there. Hold my hand in front of it. And at f4, I can go into the brick I can come back out and it looks pretty good. I mean, obviously you're not gonna look at the edges because typically the edges would be outside of the recorded sensor area. The reason you're not, it's not outside the recorded sensor area is because, again, these are both two thirds inch lenses and when you put them on a micro four thirds camera, four thirds camera, it's, that edge is within the sensor. So you're seeing all the crap on the outside. But again, why would you go to the trouble of using these lenses? Not just the constant aperture, but these are par focal lenses. So when you zoom in and focus and zoom back out, you still have that focus. Video lenses are designed to be par focal as opposed to photographic lenses. They're designed to be focused at each point, which is not what you wanna have when you're zooming. Um, and the last most important thing with these ENG lenses is you can power the zoom controller. And I'll give you an example of that right here. Uh, I have power set up for this, and if I put it into servo, I can now zoom in at a nice smooth rate, or I can zoom very fast, or I can zoom in very fast, or I can zoom out very slowly. 
There's many steps to this Zoom. This is not like a cheap camp quarter Zoom. There's a, usually about seven different steps. And depending upon the controller, you can actually, you know, really dial in whether you want the slower speeds or the faster speeds. And it can stay solid all the way through the Zoom, which is great for like suspense, driving suspense and everything. And then of course you can take the Zoom motor off and then do that whip Zoom as well. So that is like the three primary reasons you would go for an ENG lens is it is parfocal, it offers a zoom range that's unparalleled on a still lens, it's constant aperture, and if you need it, you can power the zoom motor and get a smooth servo zoom, which is great for sports. You see that all the time in sports, as the player is coming towards you, you're slowly zooming out. So you always have the same kind of shot, but they're adjust the distance is changing, so you're able to zoom out as they come in to keep the framing that you want. That is where these lenses really, you know, really do a great job. So I see a lot of people using large sensor cameras and they want to still gain the capability of these lenses on their large sensor cameras. So as we see with this lens, this lens is a two-thirds inch lens, it's hard to say, and it is going on to a four-thirds sensor. So there's no doubler in the lens. On this lens, as you can see, there's this optical part that is a doubler. You flip it in and now you've put optics in the line that expands the circle of light heading towards the sensor. So instead of you know having just this much, it's now this big, meaning it's wider than the sensor. You've zoomed into this to the center part. These are called doublers because if you're using a two-thirds inch camera and you throw the doubler in, it's now twice as close. For us with larger sensors, when you throw the doubler in, now it covers the whole frame because you're making it bigger. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this lens, which you've seen, it's this one right here. Actually, I'll put it on the side by side. I'm going to take this lens, I'm going to take it off. And these use a bayonet mount. So I'm going to take this off, put it down over here. And then I'm going to take this lens off. And put it onto this lens, this camera. This is what this lens looks like without a doubler. Now, if you add the doubler, suddenly you get full coverage. But because you've spread that light out across a larger area, the amount of light hitting any particular spot has gone down. You lose two stops when you double. So we could drop the iris here and increase our shutter speed and we get that brightness back. Now I don't have this one powered so it's just going to be manual servo. You can see, there we go, focused up and then zoom back out. Full coverage on a micro four third sensor, servo zoom, parfocal, constant aperture. So I can zoom all the way in, I can zoom all the way out. The, the, the brightness does not change anywhere in the zoom range. That's what these lenses are made for. Now, if you don't have a doubler, that's where these adapters come in. These adapters take the light coming in and expand it. Let's take a closer look at this B4 adapter that Howard Nostad, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing the last name. It is you remarkably similar to the Blackmagic adapter for Ursa because that's essentially where the optics in the front part come from. Very well built, very heavy duty, and what Howard has done is he's created a unique Micro Four Thirds adapter for the back. And this is made to very tight tolerances because the back focus adjustment on the lenses is very minute so that you can adjust any lens for the Micro Four Thirds camera. The distance is going to vary by parts of a millimeter, but when you put this on, you're within the range of the back focus adjustment for Micro Four Thirds cameras. Now, this version doesn't have a foot, so you need to have some sort of rail system that you can support the lens and support the camera, the two halves. You can't hang a B4 lens off the front of a very thin Micro Four Thirds mount. I definitely recommend against that because you could very well, if the camera bounces, damage the mount on the camera. They're not made for the weight, the size, and the distance that these lenses hang out in front. 
this this piece alone is pretty substantial in its build quality and weight. And then you add the weight of a B4 lens on the front of that, you're adding a lot of just mass hanging off the front of that mount. You don't want to do it without supporting it. I did, I'm not doing it with the other mount because the other mount actually holds the weight of the lens onto its own foot and then you mount the camera on the back of it. So the camera's not holding anything but its own weight. And these Micro Four Thirds cameras are very, very light. To put it on, it just fits like a lens would, locks into place, and then you have this bayonet mount for putting the B4 lens in here and then tightening it down against the converter. This optical adapter has is starts with a black magic optical expander that takes the light hitting a certain area, expands it out. Not a lot though. This one does not still not cover a full micro four thirds sensor. However, if you have certain Blackmagic cameras that don't use the whole Micro Four Thirds sensor, they use a smaller windowed area, namely their studio cameras, this optical adapter can give you full coverage with a lens that would normally not give you full coverage. So this lens, when you put it onto a Micro Four Thirds camera without the doubler, gives you this coverage. Now, if we put it through the optical adapter, this is the coverage with the optical adapter without with the optical adapter as you can see it's a little wider than it was when you were just going to the native sensor now it's not going to be the same as if you throw the doubler in it's going to cover the whole sensor here what we're going to do is we are going to just use the black magic adapter this is full wide eight millimeters this is at 30 millimeters, about halfway through the zoom range. And then we'll push all the way in. You can see the tape here and the power box are still in focus, even though the background is slightly soft. So there's depth of field. Here you see I'm using just the doubler, not the black magic adapter. This is full wide with the doubler. So you get, um, you're starting closer. This is about 30 millimeters and then at 120 millimeters you can see the brick is in focus and the pole is slightly soft. That's where your focus is. You can get much further reach but again at 30 and then all the way wide at 8 with the doubler you can't pull back and get as wide. But if your lens doesn't have a doubler and you want to use it on a black magic camera that uses a windowed sensor this optical adapter can be the ticket to make this lens work with the camera that you have. Alternatively, you can find a lens with a built-in doubler and you're guaranteed coverage on Micro Four Thirds sensors across the board because it actually much, goes much larger than the Micro Four Thirds sensor. So I hope this quick overview of the adapter from Howard Nofstad can give you insight as to the ability to use non-doubled B4 lenses on Micro Four Thirds cameras, windowed Micro Four Thirds cameras, by just adding this expander. My name is Anthony Barocas from IEVA Communications. Thanks for watching.